All right, it looks like we are live on the live stream. So I'm waiting for it to come up over here with the delay. And I have to mute it. Default. <coughs> there we go, coming up. There we go, got to mute it. That way we don't see it. Okay, well, here sure. we go. We'll go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome once again to another edition of the Real Interface Dialogue here on Blog Talk Radio and the Global Patriot Radio Network. And here on StreamYard, we're streamyarding or streaming, not streamyarding, we're streaming to three different locations. Two of them are on Facebook, which is the Cross and the Crescent Discussion Group and Radio Freak of Fear Stand. And we are also live streaming over here to YouTube. And I see we have a whole bunch of people in chat already. Thank you, folks, over there in chat for coming this afternoon. Uh, we have a great topic this afternoon. Why? Because I picked it. I'm kidding. Normally, I, I actually, I, what I do is I ask people that are on the panel here, uh, the oh, yeah, all five of them, all five, we got five of us here, and I asked them, I said, hey, what do you guys want to do on Sunday? What do you guys want to do on Tuesday? And Chris Claus is normally, sounds great. Radical is usually something about doing commercials, and John wants to do something te technical, and DL, well, DL likes to plead the fifth quite a bit. So this week, I picked the topic, <laughs> which is Mecca, or, or better yet, the absence of evidence for Mecca. And the reason why I did this is because recently I took a class uh, that Jay Smith, our friend Jay Smith, had given at a university that uh, I'll leave unnamed. And it was online, of course, because if you did it live, I guess you would have everybody and their brother out there uh, protesting. But anyway, it was online and it dealt with um, it dealt with the beginnings of Islam. It dealt with uh, the absence of evidence um, for Mecca. And a lot of the information that I'm going to be using and presenting here today is from Jay's uh, slideshows or one of his slideshows that he presented during uh, during the class. And I'll also mention that a lot of the information that Jay used is from our friend Dan Gibson, who we had on the show last fall. I think he was on. So a lot of this information has been brought up before on this show, been mentioned before, but I want to go ahead and just kind of do a formalized presentation of this. You know, why, uh, why is this problematic for Islam? Um, let me go ahead and share my screen here. I'm not going to share the whole thing. Let me just do it this way. There we go. Nope, that's not it. Mm, that is uh we'll just we'll just leave it at that um a lot of this is problematic for islam itself and here's why if we look at the uh psalm 1 uh or psalm 11 verse 3 it says the, the foundations are destroyed what can the righteous do and so my question would be if the foundations are destroyed for a muslim or for mecca what can a Muslim do? Because when we look at the historicity of Mecca, Islam itself is completely, I would say, completely dependent upon three things. It's completely dependent upon Muhammad. It's completely dependent upon the Quran. And it's completely dependent upon Mecca. Now, you remove one of those three pillars and everything else just falls like a house of cards. So this is why I'm saying if we take a look at the, the evidence for the existence of Mecca in the seventh century, and you can demonstrate, you can demonstrate that it did not exist in the seventh century. Think of what, what that would do to the faith of 1.6 billion Muslims across across the globe. If you can show, and it, it just if you, it reminds me of last year when um, uh, Yasser Qadi and um, Mimi Hajab got together and they had that holes in the narrative discussion and how that shattered the faith of thousands of Muslims because the, they, they can clearly see that the Quran has not indeed been perfectly preserved. Well, if you could take away one of the pillars of Islam, which is the existence of Mecca, because if you think of what Mecca is to a Muslim, Mecca is 
uh, where, where is, is their Qibla. It's where they pray five times a day. It is where uh, they make the Hajj. It is where Muhammad was born. It, it is all kinds of things to Muslims. And what we're, my goal is, is to point out that we don't have any evidence for it. If you look at the Bible, and you make a comparison to the Quran and its uh, references to geographic locations, which we're going to do here shortly. The the differences are are stark and startling. For an example, for an example, Jerusalem in the Bible is mentioned over eight hundred times in both the Old and the New Testament. Mecca in the Quran is mentioned one time. So that should give you some idea of the importance of if you are going to say your capital city, your capital city is Jerusalem, and then as a Muslim, you're going to change that to Mecca, but yet it's only mentioned one time in the Quran, that indeed has to be problematic. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these uh, problems uh, with Mecca. Now, number one, if we look at why do why do we do this this historical critique? As I just mentioned, it it strikes right at the very foundations of Islam. It strikes right at the very foundation of the Quran. It strikes rare right at the very foundation of Muhammad. The second thing I like about this is that it's neutral. Any idiot can use this information. It's just, it, when you start stating facts, historical facts, this is why it's so easy to be a, a historian is because uh, history is a lot about, deals a lot with historical historical facts. The second thing is it's not, it's, it, you're, you're not attacking anybody. Uh, or third thing, I'm sorry, you're not attacking anybody. You are only pointing out what can or what is there and what is not there. So you're not attacking Muslims. You're uh, you can't be told it's hate speech. I mean, when you t when you when you when you cite historical facts, um, how th there's really no way that that could be hate speech. Now I, I I get it. You know, you could you could state or cite different ahadith and say, okay, well, since you're pointing out that Muhammad um, had sex with Aisha when she was nine years old and he was 54, that's hate speech. Okay, that's I mean, I, I, I can I can understand your your stance on that. But when you start talking about uh, history and you start talking about geography, there, there really is it's really not personal. And it doesn't make you an Islamophobe for, for, uh, for citing facts. And it's easy to communicate, which makes it easy because it's very visual. And I have a lot of visuals for you today. And it it answers a lot of the problems that we find within the Quran. What I, that's my goal today is to show you some of the problems that it, that it has. Why Mecca is not the city as described in the Quran. So we're going to look at uh, four. We're only going to look at three different areas. I don't want to get to debunking seventh century claims because that can be a long and drawn out part process. But I do want to point out the first three. So let's go ahead and look at. Um, uh, the geographical problems. So if you look at the geographical problems in the Quran itself, and a lot of this information comes from, where'd it go? It comes from Dan Gibson's book, Chronic Geography, right here. And it points out that there's two regions that are in the Quran that are mentioned a total of, uh, what is that, 47 times, Ad and Thalmud, which is two different peoples. Well, if you if you look where these locations are, they're, 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 they're what four or five hundred miles north of where Mecca is. So unless Muhammad was communicating with these people on a daily basis or interacting with these people on a daily basis, that in of itself should tell should at least make it problematic for someone to believe that uh, Mecca is the city that that, that they're speaking of. Um, it talks about that there was dwellings that were cut in the sides of mountains. There's no dwellings cut in the side of the mountains down in Mecca. Um, it talks about Midian, which is further north, 600 miles north. Um, and it also says that these three civilizations are in northern Arabia. So if you're 600 miles too far north for these three civilizations that are mentioned in the Quran, where would that place Mecca? Well, that would place Mecca out of place because Mecca would, would is way too far south. Now, let's look at some of the comparisons here for... Uh, how or for where geographical locations are made in the Quran you have 65 references geographical references to different places 
it mentions not it only mentions nine places total which is pretty uh, let me add this sorry um which is pretty amazing if you if you th if you think about it if you, you're only mentioning nine different places in a, in a book that tells me that there's something wrong with the book especially if this is supposed to be the last testament of god and these places are 600 miles too far north and they're all in the wrong place now you compare that to the gospel of luke if you look at the gospel of luke there's 110 just in the gospel of luke alone there's 110 different references 31 different places are mentioned and they're all at the right place at the right time so when we look at the Gospel of Luke and we can demonstrate using geography, using archaeology, that these places existed in the first century. They existed at the time of the events that the, the Gospel pretends to uh, describe. Then it puts them at the right place and at the right time, whereas in the Quran, it does not. Let's compare that to the other three Gospels. The Gospel of Matthew has 108 geographical references. Now remember, the Quran only has 65. Matthew has 108, Mark has 79, and the Gospel of John even has more than the Quran, has 69. So all four of the Gospels have uh, more references to geographic locations than the Quran itself. You have 31 locations in Matthew, you have 26 locations in Mark, and you have 14 locations named in uh, the Gospel of John. Where in the Quran, you only have nine. So all of the Gospels name these locations. Now here is a map of where Mecca is located. Let me, is this it? Yes. So if you look right here, here's Mecca. And up here is where you would find Petra, right up here in Jordan. So when we talk about the Nabataeans, Ad and Thalmud, this is, this is the location that they're talking about. So the distance from here to here is over 600 miles. That should be very problematic. Now, notice also the geography here. You have the Red Sea runs up the entire west coast of uh, Saudi Arabia today, and then the Gulf of Aqaba angles up to where it is in the southern part of the Negev Desert of Israel, also known as Beersheba. So let's uh, uh, proceed from there. Okay, so here is a map a facsimile, facsimile of a map from the seventh century at the time of Muhammad, at the time that Mecca is supposed to exist. Notice the trade routes. The green is the trade routes, the way people would uh, uh, trade over land, in, on the sea, etc. What is missing from there? What city is missing? I'll give you one guess. It begins with M and ends with Ekka. Very good, class. You're we're all over it. Mecca is missing. What about this one right here? Here we have another uh, uh, facsimile. Uh, what is missing? Again, it's showing trade routes. There is no Mecca. There is nothing there. Here is um, a 6th century map. Now, the 6th century map uh, is at the time when Muhammad was Muhammad born in 572. Uh, he lives in, up to 632, I think, is the year that he died. Uh, makes Hijra, uh, what's that, 623. Starts receiving revelations around 610. Makes Hijra around 623. And notice what's not on the map. There's no Mecca on this map. If Mecca was supposed to be the mother of all cities, like it was supposed to be, like is described in the, in, um, in, in the Quran, Uh, send me an email. Uh, why hops wash? Not same. It's Dave. Send me an email, and I'll send you the link. Um, so if you look, there's no mention of Mecca here either. Um, if you look on this seventh century map, there's no Mecca. These maps, folks. If these, if, and look how detailed this map is. I mean, it gives uh, so hundreds of cities are located on here, but there's no Mecca. If Mecca is supposed to be the place where uh, it's supposed to be the mother of all cities, is supposed to be a prominent place on a trading route, you would expect to find it. But it's not there. And this is where we say there's no evidence at all on any of these maps, any of these maps, that Mecca exists. It's just, it's just not there. 
Now, let's look at some of the problems with Mecca uh, itself. Let me check my email, see if I got one. Don't have it yet. Okay, uh, email, Eric, ericthekafer at gmail.com. Eric, let me, I'm sorry, let me, I'm sorry, folks. I, when I start, multi, I'm, I, I cannot multitask. I have kind of a track mind. It's not good. There we go. Oh, well, I just, I just posted it. Okay. Uh, where'd it go? Okay, so if we look at uh, the Mediterranean world, uh, at the time of wait, Mecca. wait, 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 you silly kafir, you silly kafir. We only accept Islamic maps. Are these Islamic maps? Do you have a chain of tra 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 transmission for these Islamic maps? If you don't have an Ishna, then we reject this. We reject this. Sorry, just playing the most. Thank you, Rad. I appreciate you. You do, you do a good job of that. A little too good, if you ask me. I'm actually really um, okay. secretly undercover Muslim. I'm taking down names, and yeah, we're turning you all into uh, ISIS. Yeah, so sorry. Okay, let's look at some of the problems uh, with Mecca. The sanctuary appointed for Mac mankind is at Becca. Is that supposed to be Mecca? And John did a good job for us uh, a number of weeks ago showing, or was it Adam? One of you two guys got on here and showed us how you can change a, a let's see, a B to an M by just inserting a circle at the corner of the letter. Yeah, so but can, uh, Mecca. Yeah, true. Yes. In Arabic, just uh, half circle, not complete circle. From Bakka to Mecca. Just, just by inserting this. I mean, you don't yeah, have to change yeah. anything. You just insert this little squiggly, this little round yeah. circle on the corner of that letter. It changes the word, yeah. and it moves it from Becca, which is the house, Mecca. which is a valley of weeping, and uh, I remember yesterday, I, I, I there was like um, I gave you like an article in Saudi Saudi writers. They are trying yeah, to I change Bakka because Bakka has no nothing in history, doesn't appear in history in this area. Only Mecca. Well, the re well, we could we could about imagine why the Saudis want to change it too. Yeah, yeah. Because how much money do they make every year off the Hajj? I mean, that's, that's got to be a ton of money going into that economy there. Um, that's just me being simple. Okay. Uh, it's described as the mother of all settlements, as I mentioned before. It's where Adam and Eve were supposedly thrown down from heaven onto the earth. If you, if you follow the Quran, and this is, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but the Quran has Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden existing in heaven. And then when Adam and Eve sinned, God threw them down to the earth. And when he threw them down to the earth, the place that they went was Mecca. Um, it's supposed to be where Abraham lived uh, in 1900. Now, how Abraham got 600 miles south really is, I mean, maybe he got on a boat. We don't know. Um, but if, if this is supposed to be where he sacrificed uh, Ishmael, he would have been on a long, uh, a very long journey just to do that. And it just does not make any sense to, to, to try to insert that story um, into, into the biblical narrative. It's where uh, Muhammad was born and lived, and it became the center for the Qibla uh, in 620. That, might, that sounds wrong. Is that right? It came, became the center for the Qibla. I thought it was like 628 or 627. Does anybody know if I'm right or wrong on that? Maybe somebody can fact check that for me. It just seems like it was later during Muhammad's ministry, prophethood, that he changed the Qibla uh, from Jerusalem to... According to Quran, it should be changed at days of Muhammad from Jerusalem to Mecca. But historically, uh, and uh, you know, we, 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 uh, we saw the work of Dan Gibson is not showing that. It was uh, right. many years later. Okay, so what, do you know the year that that was the the Qibla was supposed to be changed from? Uh, no, I, I don't to, know exactly. Okay, maybe know. somebody. Maybe I can somebody I can look. search and uh, check. Okay, thanks. Uh, all right, and what else do we know? Um, and then, and plus, there's only one mention of the word, or the, we only have, have one mention of Mecca by name. 
uh, in the Quran, where in the Bible we have Jerusalem mentioned over 700 times, so this or 800 times. That's very problematic. If you were going to say that this is supposed to be uh, the city that is so important to God, to where he would send Adam and Eve down uh, from heaven, if this is the city that is supposed to be the mother of all settlement, settlements, if this is the city where Abraham was, if this is the city where God's last prophet for mankind lived and was born, if this is supposed to be the city that you're supposed to pray to, why is it only mentioned one time in the Quran? Why is that? That's very problematic, but that's it gets worse. Let's just put it that way. Okay, now there is little vegetation in Mecca. Uh, if you look in Mecca today, I have this. I'm, we'll just go through this. Okay, here's here's some of the descriptions that we have in uh, a hadith and also in the uh, seer of Muhammad. It's supposed to be in a valley, a parallel valley. It's supposed to have a stream going through it. Um, it's supposed to be uh, outside uh, is the ruins, then there's supposed to be a pillar of salt there. Oopsie. This is what happens when I let people in. I It switches my screen on me. Sorry about that. What do we got here? We got a couple people watching on Facebook. Very good. Uh, all right. Uh, where were we? And it has fields. Now, that's important. If you have fields, that means that you're growing stuff. What grow? Okay, we'll get to that. Hold on. Um, it has trees and grass and fruit and clay and loam, meaning that you, it is tillable ground is how this is uh, described by Al-Tabari. Al-Bukhari says it has grapes in it. Al-Bukhari says it has grass in it. So there's all kinds of extra Quranic references to Mecca that uh, throw everything off. If you look at Surah 6, 16 and 80, it says it has olive trees. That is very problematic because there is no way an olive tree can grow in, Me in Mecca. If you look at the, the amount of rainfall they get, they get like a two inches of rain a year. Olive trees are indigenous to the Mediterranean world, much further north, much further north where, where you would have them in uh, what is now Israel, or you would have them in where the Nabataeans were. Uh, in uh, in Jordan today, you would have olive trees, but you do not have olive trees in Mecca. So if you don't have olive trees in Mecca, there's no trace of olive trees in Mecca, meaning there's no, we don't find any seeds there. We don't find any uh, spores there. We don't find anything in that hard, rocky soil, if you want to call it that, sand, uh, that indicates that any olive trees ever were grown there or ever could have grown there. So why is the Quran describing that Mecca has olive trees in it? That's very puzzling. It has mountains overlooking the Kaaba. Mountains, not hills, mountains. Um, now, I guess if you're here in Iowa, uh, maybe mountains would be, <laughs> it doesn't have to be very high in order to be a mountain here in Iowa. So it, I guess a mountain would be re a relative. I'll cut them some slack on that one. But um, if you look at Mecca today, it's not in the valley and it does not have any of those items listed above. This is a picture of Mecca today. I'm trying to look at the water that runs right down between it. Oh, well, they built over the top of everything. So I guess we'll, we'll never know about that. Um, when we look at the earliest literary references to Mecca, uh, the earliest one isn't until 741 A.D. So let's just, let's just think about this just for a second here. Number one, the geography. When we look at the geography of Mecca and we look at the things that are supposed to be exist there, grass, trees, uh, soil, tillable soil, olive trees, those things that are supposed to be there, they're not there. Number two... If you look at the maps, the existent, the maps that existed at that time, Mecca is not mentioned. It's not mentioned on any maps. And then number three, we don't have any mentions in any type of literature of Mecca until 741 A.D. This is over a hundred years after the death of Muhammad. When Muhammad died in 632. So this is, yeah, thank you, Gedalia. She uh, beating me to it. Way to go. Um, this is a hundred and what is that? A hundred and nine years before it's even mentioned uh, 
And um, Rob, quit, or who is this? Why Huff's not? Did you send me an email? Hold on. Oops. Let me check. Hand account. Huff's okay. Uh, let me pull. Let me pull. Let me pull the, the StreamYard link here. Um, sure. Can I ask a question real quick? If it's all right. Who's talking? Is that you, Isa? It's me. Okay, go ahead. What's up? It's more of like a follow-up question for what you were stating. If you, what would be enough evidence to prove that Mecca would be Becca? What would you need to see to prove that? Like, so you were talking about the math, you were talking about kinds of other foods. What, like, if you were to make a checklist, what other kinds of things would you need to, for you to be persuaded that Mecca would equal Mecca? What would persuade me that what is not Mecca? That, that Becca would be Mecca, like, because that's what Muslims are arguing, that Becca is Mecca, right? So what would you need to see for the, to believe the Muslim claim? Well, I would, well, something we call evidence, archaeological evidence, for one, uh, consistency in the geographical references, um, a map showing Mecca to, to exist. In the, the whole thing is, is, is not disproving that Mecca exists. The whole purpose of this is to show that Mecca did not exist in the seventh century. So when you don't have any type of references to it in literature, if you don't have any references to it in maps, if you don't have the, if the, 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 the Quran and also the extra Quranic literature, which is the Hadith, the Sira, whatever, are inconsistent about what should be in Mecca, that indicates to me that it it, 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 they have the wrong city. Now, what would, or, or, and also um, something um, archaeological, you know, give me, you know, show me something there that shows that the city existed uh, prior to the seventh century. On top of that, I would also ask for, you know, if this was supposed to be the place of the Hijra, where everybody made, or not Hijra, the Hajj, where everybody made a pilgrimage to it for all these years, because everybody was a Muslim, I guess. You would have some type of inscriptions on rocks surrounding the area from that time period that would indicate that people are on their way there or this is the city that they need to go to make a, make make this pilgrimage. The problem is, is that there is I mean, it's just dead silence uh, when we look at uh, any mentions in the Bible for locations in the Bible. We don't have to go to the Bible to look for these uh, uh, references. We can demonstrate the majority of the uh, places that are talked about in the Bible, spoken of in the Bible. We can demonstrate them through the use of archaeology. We can demonstrate those through extra biblical sources, and we do thing with the Quran is, is that in order to demonstrate that Mecca existed in the 7th century, you have to go to only Islamic sources, Hadith, the Sira, or even uh, Tasfir. That's it. Anything else? Not there. Does that make sense, Isa? It does. Or am, so I, am, am I being, am I, okay, let me ask you this, because you, you always ask great questions. Am I being too critical? Am I being hypercritical here? In your opinion, so I'm, I want to make sure I rephrase. I'm going to rephrase back to you what I think I'm hearing you say, just to make sure I understand. So you're saying not only are it the position that you take, you don't believe Mecca is even a historical city because that's like for Muslims, that's a big deal. They believe that Abraham and Ishmael went to um, went to uh, Mecca, right? That's the argument that, that that's how old Mecca is. It's supposed to be that ancient, right? So if it's correct, and the, and the panel is here. So I'm just making sure I'm clarifying and I understand everything correctly. You're saying that's not even true. And not only is that not true, what's not true also is that, um, th that Mecca wasn't even a prominent city at all until the 7th century. That's when, or it's maybe even after the 7th century. Is that correct? Am I understanding correctly or not? Well, I don't think it was a prominent uh, city. Uh, I mean, if, it, the, if the first mention, the first mention we have of Mecca in any type of literature is 741, outside of Islamic You're saying 8th century. You're saying 8th century. 8th eight, century, uh, right. 8th century wow. is the earliest okay. mention that we have of Mecca. Most certainly, we do not have anything there that would date it clear back to Abraham. You know, Abraham's 1900 BC for crying out loud. There's nothing that even comes close uh, to that. 
So when you look at, you know, the source for uh, biblical stories, you know, the majority of the stories that we have in the Bible um, can and are supported by extra biblical evidence. But with Mecca, there's nothing there. It's it's the absence of evidence of and I'm not just saying the absence of evidence. I'm the, 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 the entire history of it prior to the seventh century is silent. There's nothing there. And I want to show you a couple other things before uh, uh, we, we get going any further down that road, if you don't mind. Um, let's go ahead and finish this slideshow up. I don't have very many more to go. Um, as I mentioned, the earliest maps don't show Mecca until 900 AD. Oops. It would be helpful if I put the slideshow back up there, wouldn't it? Okay, so the earliest maps don't show Mecca until 900 AD. It's not mentioned in any extant writings until 741. And if you look at uh, Patricia Corona, um, she said that the trading documents uh, referred to the towns of Taif, which is south of Mecca, Yathrib and uh, Kaibar, but never Mecca. It never mentions Mecca as a city. Why'd that go off there? goes off there. Um, if you look at Mecca today, this is what Mecca looks like today. Um, it has the world's fourth highest building in it. If you look at this huge tower rising up out of the desert there in the Saudi Arabian uh, desert, I mean, it's, it's, the thing is absolutely huge. And it has this clock face on it uh, that is 45 feet wide. It's some people, this is what Jay Smith thinks, is that they're gonna, they're trying to uh, change it from uh, Greenwich Mean Time, which is time in London, to uh, Mecca Mean Time. Just want the whole, just like the, uh, you have AH after Hijra instead of AD, it's after Hijra instead of Anno Domine, it's AH. They they want to change that also, uh, which I don't think that's ever going to catch on. But then you never know. Um, but it most definitely won't catch on. Uh, after this slideshow. Um, if you look at Mecca today, here's the Kaaba right here, this itty bitty dot right here. And look at all these proposed drawings that are, that they're proposed, uh, that there's, that they want to um, build. But if you look at it, they've made a really good start. I think there's 62 skyscrapers um, that they're building there. This It's just absolutely huge. But when you look at these skyscrapers, and this is the point that I'm making, when you go to build, um, like in let's say um, in the year, I think it was 1996, they had the Olympics in Greece. I may be wrong on. I'm willing to be wrong on that, uh, but I believe they had the Summer Olympics in Greece. And in order to prepare for the Summer Olympics, Greece had to go through this huge building process. When I talk about a huge building process, if you're going to have this the Olympics in your city. You have to go through a lot of building. You have to do a lot of digging. And every, the problem with that, with digging in Greece, is every time you put a shovel in the ground, you're digging something up or that has some type of archaeological value. It got to the point where they're t digging up so many artifacts that they're making display cases in the subways for people to look at. I mean, I, I thought that was, you know, really interesting and cool to see. But the fact is, is that since the city was so old, Athens is such an old city, dating clear back to what the fifth, sixth century uh, BC. You're, you're, it's natural that you're going to be digging stuff up, but if this city is supposed to date back to uh, 1900 BC when Abraham lived, if it's supposed to even let's say it's supposed to date back to the seventh century AD, you would expect to have some type of archaeological evidence being produced that would be dug up when you can undergo building projects like this, especially around the Kaaba. If the Kaaba was supposed to be this place that people were making pilgrimages to, you would expect to have some type of uh, archaeological evidence for it. The problem is, is that there is none. And since there isn't any archaeological evidence to support a 7th century Mecca, what better way, what better way could there be to cover that up than to actually cover it up, cement over it, build all these things around it, and just pretend, pretend like it's there, but, oh, I'm sorry, we just, you know, we don't venerate objects, so we're going we're gonna to build these buildings over it. So the bottom line is, is that when you look at the evidence against the existence of Mecca prior to the seventh century. It's overwhelming, the evidence against it. 
if you were going to present evidence for it, for uh, Mecca existing in the seventh century AD and prior to that, I would really like to see it. Okay. Who's got a question? Who's got something to interject here? Somebody has to have something to say because I just ran out of material. Well, I, I just like to add a, a, a few times um, to the Kufars in the room. Um, clearly, Mecca um, is um, the holy city from God because look at how lavish it is. Okay? Um, clearly, I mean, it was unhuman. Well, the Kaaba, for instance. <clears throat> was just a pile of unhewn stones without a roof, you know, where dogs and other animals would go in to seek shelter and defecate, okay, and and the pagans would put up um, their various um, um, representations of their deity. So clearly, clearly, um, this is clearly a sign that it is from the true Allah, right? Because, you know, that's what you would want, you know. Have faith. Just have a little yeah. faith, and exactly. It, but but look at look at Mecca now. You've got Big Ben clock there now. You got luxurious hotels, and and you worry you worry of pilgrims. Okay, you don't have to do all the nonsense that they you know are out in the open. I mean, they actually have walkways now. Okay, I don't know if you know this, but to run. Okay, so there's a bunch of different things. It depends what package you book, okay? This is before COVID, don't get me wrong. But you could uh, uh, um, book the package where you don't even set foot outside into the Arab sun, okay? Because you are in constant air condition, either in a bus, and I believe they have, like, they have in Las Vegas, um, where they have, like, the air-conditioned streets now. You, you know what I mean? Where you walk down... Um, <laughs> Um, what do you call it? The uh, Boulevard uh, in Las Vegas, you know, where they got the sky thing over you, the tent and everything. And it's all air conditioned. It's just like you walked outside of the hotel into, well, another hotel. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so so you don't, you, don't, you don't have to suffer all that when, when, when you go on uh, the hit drop. You don't, when, when you're running in, there's no running in between the two little hills. They're actually not hills, I don't think. I think they're just like piles of rocks, aren't they? The hills of Sa they're, they're, top they're, 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 Marwa, they're, they're nothing yeah. but hills. They're not mountains, as you would uh, expect to find. Right. Um, well, all that's right. air conditioned. Yeah, all that's air conditioned. And, hey, this is a bonus for you men. You ain't wearing no underwear, and neither are the women. So when you get compressed, I'm just saying. You get some little mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, going on there. Somebody was having a discussion about that. I don't know on whose show it was or if I was listening to somebody's podcast where they were talking about um, how many uh, attacks there are, sexual assaults that there, oh, there are is. Oh. Um, in these in, in, in during the Hajj, which is to me, it's just completely disgusting to think that yep. that would even be. Um, that would even be a, a concern, but they say that you know, since you know, everybody wants to, everybody wants to get along because it is the Hajj, and they want to show some type of community. Since the community, they don't, they they highly discourage people from from reporting. Oh no, yeah, there are yeah, actual absolutely. Muslim women groups. Okay, they're on the like down low as you will because they just get slammed when they speak out against this going on Hajj. What the hell is this? You know. Um, yeah, I mean, well, dude, you look, you, you ask any woman who goes to Egypt, okay? Um, they take a taxi cab and they're just completely sexually harassed, okay? Especially, you know, like a woman's group, you know, you, you know what I mean? Especially as the young college students going over there. I mean, it's just horrendous, okay? Well, what's happening here? And, and, and that's because they, they are honestly, well, their, their view of women is, well, they're just a, you know, a piece of dirt, you know, that they can uh, plow their field at any time. Anyway, but but no, seriously, the, the, the thing on, on Mecca, what, what I find interesting on, on the story of Mecca, all the things you brought up, there's no fields, there's no date palms, there's no trees, there's no nothing, right? Okay. Mecca is in a, what's called a wadi, okay? It is a floodplain, okay? 
I'm going to see if you have that name. Okay. Um, it, it, it's in the. Well, let me just tell our slam our end. Go ahead and send it. I'll pull it up in my email. All right. Well, it, it's a wadi. It's a floodplain. Now, here's the deal with that. Okay. There are many floodplains in that area of Arabia. Okay. Actually, most of it, it's a floodplain if you look at it. Okay. Um, well, when you only get like a. A, a few centimeters of rain, you know, uh, uh, once a century. If you get an inch of rain, you know, in, in a, in a, you know, a, a, a one day period, you're going to flood. But so, and they were set up deliberately. What these things were, these Kaabas, there were many Kaabas, many shrines around that part of Arabia. And that actually is documented in one of the Greek historians, okay, that wrote about it. I forget um, his name. Um, Ptolemy. Ptolemy, yeah, Ptolemy, that's it. Well, it starts with the P, right? right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Ptolemy. It's, it's the P is Ptolemy. Fine. But then why put the P in there? Oh. That's like Illinois. Illinois, I, the S is not, why put the S there? Then? That's like Illinois. Or how about Des Moines? Des Moines. I mean, what? Yeah, exactly. What? Yeah. What? Why do people? Anyway, see? Anyway, point, point being is this. I think maybe that's a representation of a phlegm or something like that. Anyway. Uh, um, um, point being is this: so, so they would put up these uh, wadis because the Arabs at that time, um, because well, they didn't have much resources. And I'm surprised. Why would anyone? Uh, let, let's say you go with Darwinism on migration and stuff like that. We all started in Africa and migrated out and wandered about. Blah, blah. Why would you stay in Arabia? Why would you stay there? You're walking through. Keep walking, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, right. just kind of keep going, you know? But evidently, people did. They liked to climb it. Hey, people, you know, whatever. Okay. Anyway, point being is this. These tribes, they would go and raid each other, okay? And they would go and steal their stuff. And it was almost comical. It was almost kind of a... Uh, uh, um, uh, a childish thing. Normally, nobody would get killed. You would just kind of capture people. You know, it's kind of like capture the flag was a game kind of deal. And then they would pay ransom and everybody would get along, blah, 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 whatever. they trade women, you know, whatever, you know. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it was almost a game for the most part, as far as what I can tell in my research that I did years ago. Okay. Um, and, and then you would have a holy man, a shaman, Okay, if it got too bloody or if it got too too big of a deal, he would set up a Kaaba in one of these wadis for a very specific reason. Because these things were not supposed to last. They were not supposed to stand. The whole thing, once they had the powwow, the sit down, okay, or the parlay, if you will, okay, between the various tribes where they worked it out, where they wouldn't go around raiding each other uh, anymore, okay, they, they would work out their hunting lands or whatever, okay, but they would set this thing up specifically for that purpose, and then once they were done with it, they would move on, move away from it, because it was a floodplain. You don't want to live in a floodplain, right? Okay? Now, my theory is this, uh, going along with, um, uh, um, um, what's his name? Um, Dan, right? Dan, what's his name? Um, the guy you were talking about. Gibson? Guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I agree with his theory um, that 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 um, um, Mecca, when they describe Mecca, they're really describing uh, um, Petros or whatever, or or the Jordanian um, Valley. Okay, the, um, I, I, I believe that. I, I'm a firm believer in that. But here's the deal: this area was well known by the time of the Arab conquest. And the Arab conquest had really nothing to do with Muhammad. If you read the early interactions, okay, with Christians, um, with, with, with the Christian uh, uh, of the Byzantine Empire, and, and their interaction with the Muslim invading armies, there's no mention of Muhammad. There's no mention of a prophet. Okay, they just want to know what these Christians believe. And, and, and these so-called, well, Nazi Muslims, they had a certain belief because they had interacted with Jews and stuff like that. So they had come up with the concept of a monotheistic God, if you will, in a certain point. So they're still developing this, right? And they didn't have any holy city or holy shrine. And then somewhere, somewhere down the line of 100 years later or so, can you get the idea? Hey, I know where my tribe is from. There was this wadi, this, this Mecca, why don't we put it there? Because nobody's going to go there. Who would go there? You know what I mean? Okay? So it's out of the way. Nobody's going to question it. Hey, that's a great idea. And I think that's what they did. It was actually designed for that reason, 100 years um, 
after the alleged Muhammad, um, who I believe is multiple people. So yeah, but anyway, that's well, all there's I'm a saying. lot of well, there's a lot of when we look at the history of Muhammad, there's no mention of Muhammad for over sixty years uh, anywhere in, in right. the literature, uh, unless you stick if you follow the, the again the standard Quran, the, the standard Islamic narrative, which uh, provides some type of evidence or that. That, that says that he did exist or that he did live from 570 to 632. There's nothing there. When we look at uh, the, the first reference to him, I, the first reference to him, I believe, is on a coin uh, that isn't dated until around 690 something. So when you start looking at the evidence for Muhammad, it th there's more more evidence for Muhammad than there is for the city of Mecca. Uh, I would grant that because you have something that says uh, that that has a coin there. Um, and then you also have the Dome of the Rock. But other than that, there's nothing. So when we start evaluating all this in its entirety, it's like this entire idea was invented. And uh, uh, Jay Smith does a good job of uh, providing an, an uh, well, let's say, an ex not an excuse, but a possible scenario how Islam was formed. And he talks about how, you know, the conflict between different, the Umayyad and the Abyssinian dynasties and, and things of that nature. But the fact is, is that the evidence for the standard narrative just, it just simply does not, it, it's, it's just not there. And when you look at what Dan, the work, work that Dan Gibson uh, is doing and has done, where he points out um, where you look at the early Islamic Qiblas, the earliest Islamic Qiblas don't point towards Mecca. And if Mecca is supposed to be that city, that mother of all cities, um, let's see, was it 692? Rob K says the 692 was for the coins, removed images and put the first mention of the Shahada. All right, thank you, Rob, I appreciate that. Um, the first mention of, or what I was gonna say is that the first indication that they're the direction of prayer towards Mecca isn't until the eighth century, a full hundred, almost a hundred years after the death of Muhammad. So you have all of these mosques being, if you're, this is supposedly, you're supposedly having all of these mosques constructed with the Qibla facing Mecca, but it doesn't for the first hundred years. If you look at the Dome of the Rock, if you look at the Al Alaska uh, Mosque, they don't face the, the Qibla does not face Mecca; it faces Petra. So when Dan Gibson makes the argument, and, and here's the thing: it, just as soon, just as soon as you start engaging people on this topic, and this, I'm just going to give you guys warning: if you're if you're going to engage Muslims on you know whatever social media platforms or on your uh, or on your podcast or whoever, here's what they do. When you bring up the all of these problems with Mecca being uh, the the um, historical place in the seventh century, when you bring bring up that it, it was not there, if you mention Dan Gibson, the whole conversation moves away from them answering questions and trying to present some type of evidence for Mecca to all kinds of ev er, arguments against or against Petra being the, the place of where uh, they're, they're talking about in the Quran. So I would just recommend just avoid all that nonsense. We, you don't have to prove that Petra is it. You don't have, I mean, that's, you, that's like the last thing that you need to do. What they need to prove is that Mecca existed in the seventh century. Yes, you're absolutely right, Protestant. Yeah. This is uh, Ed Van Halen typing in there saying that they want to discredit Dan. Yes, they do. And then who's the guy that, uh, that was the, he was supposed to be this expert king, Dan King, or something king, something like that, where he was supposed to be the expert on uh, all the Kiblas. And then as soon as Dan started publishing all the, his, his books on the, the Kiblas not pointing towards Mecca, this guy lost his mind. Does anybody have any information? David King, there you go, thank you. It was David King, and he's supposed to have oh, a PhD, and he's supposed to know. And what is Dan Gibson? Dan Gibson is just your average day, you know, everyday average uh, run of the mill archaeologist who's actually been to these locations, over a hundred different locations, and did some has done the digging, has done the work, and determined where the direction of the Kiblas were supposed to be. And they do not face, they do not face Mecca uh, for a hundred years. 
Okay, does anybody have anything? We might be out of here early today. Last week, and I appreciate Chris Claus. Where'd Chris go? Where was Chris? Chris is like here and then he's gone. Did he type something over here? Chris, where did you go? Uh, I, I would like to ask uh, two questions. I think it's me. Okay, John, go ahead. Okay, uh, first thing, let us say that uh, Mecca is a holy city. As Muhammad said in Quran or um, Hadith, it's the holy city, it's uh, uh, Umm al-Qura, Umm al-Mudun, uh, all these things. Why we couldn't see any prophet for all prophets from, or, or even the lineage of Ishmael to Muhammad, uh, living in Mecca or saying anything about, uh, anything about uh, the Ka Kaaba, um, Nothing. There is nothing said from any prophet that uh, he went to Kaaba or went to Mecca. If it's holy city, all of them they were living in the promised land in Israel, and um, no one spoke about anything about uh, Mecca. Then this is something strange. Why Moses, when he left Egypt, didn't uh, running after he killed the Egyptian guy there? Why he didn't go to Mecca? He left in Midian. Midian is the, is far from uh, Mecca, about a thousand kilometers. Uh, it's around Jordan. It's the place where uh, Ishmael lives, uh, in front of Isaac, from uh, Midian till uh, uh, till uh, Iraq. All this area, far from Mecca, about thousand kilometers. Then we, we we didn't see any prophet saying that Mecca is a holy city. We didn't see that any prophet say that there is a, a holy building called Kaaba or whatever in Mecca. All speak about the temple in Jerusalem made by uh, David, King David, or King uh, Solomon, his son. This is the first point. Uh, the second point, um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, second point that Kaaba. Uh, is made, uh, um, it's, known, it's known for Arabs that they write everything in their point. They have, even they, when they love a woman or something, they make like big point, like a uh, thousand lines, and spoke about their uh, loving woman. Why we don't have any single point for any Arab speaking about Mecca or uh, Abraham who built Kaaba? We don't have any single point saying that. Although we have many, uh, many writers, many po poems there uh, made by uh, Christians and Jewish in uh, Arabia before Islam, but there is no single point written says that there is a holy city called Mecca or a holy building called Kaab. This is something strange. We don't have any evidence even from the, uh, um, the, the poems uh, written before uh, Islam. These uh, are two points. I'm, I'm far away from Dan Gibson. I'm far away because when you say Dan Gibson, as you said, all people, no, 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 no. He is wrong, he's wrong. But think, think little. There is no evidence from the prophets. There is no evidence from the people living in Arabia who wrote everything in poets. Well, well, first off, let me just uh, let me make another note here. Um, it's preservation's the note I'm making here. If you look at what are the conditions are necessary in order to preserve uh, documents, for an example, um, you don't get any better conditions than a dry environment, a dry, hot environment to preserve documents. So when John starts asking, okay, where is the evidence for any Arabs mentioning Mecca? Where is the ev any evidence? Um, I, I just would like to tell you something. All okay. Arabs before Muhammad were known that uh, by memorization, all their points. They don't write. Most of them were, were illiterate. Seem like Muhammad. There is no difference. But they made a lot, a lot, a lot of um, good, like, uh, points. And they called muallaqat. They were put hang. Muallaqat means in Arabic hang. Hang over the Kaaba. They write it over Kaaba. Uh, but they were memorizing them. Everyone can, was telling to the others. The other 
uh, uh, passed to the other. And we didn't collect all these stuff except like 100 years after their this. The same like Quran. Okay, so Quran what, you're, is, what you're saying yeah. is there's no traditions. There, even, you know, even when we start looking at, okay, I'm, this, I'm coming at this from a Western perspective where we say, okay, we, I would like to see something in writing and it should be preserved. And they did have some writings at the time, and, 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 and you're absolutely right at that. Not to, to the extent that the Western world did, but they're coming from a, a more of an oral tradition and oral yes. society. What yes. you're saying is that there's no traditions prior to the seventh century that mentioned Muhammad or Mecca in any of those. Nothing, uh, nothing. Completely absent. And sure. even uh, Abraham, uh, no one said that uh, Abraham was living here. No one said that the Kaaba, this Kaaba is made by Abraham, except Muhammad. Yes. Is it something known? Is this something known historically? Then at least I, I should see it in many uh, uh, writings of uh, pre-Islamic uh, era. Nothing. There is nothing at all. Yeah, I can say that I was camping out on Mars for the last 200 years, but uh, uh, that's my tradition. So you're going to have to believe me when I say that, right? Is anybody going to believe me when I say that? I'll, I'll believe you, Ed. I'll, I'll, the <laughs> yeah. one person. Before, so, right. so what you need to have is you need to have evidence. You need to have evidence. You can have this oral tradition all day long, but until you have the actual evidence proving it, it won't even go through a court of law, will it? No, and and John touched on something that was that was very important because when you start speaking of evidence, you would like to see some type of tradition existing prior to this. If you're supposed to make this all important hajj to this city, you would expect to find some type of evidence for that city being mentioned. And he and he pointed to something that's critically important. When you look at at all the prophets. If Abraham was supposed to be uh, lived in Mecca, if Abraham was supposed to have gone to Mecca, you would have some type of mention. You would have some type of tradition. You would have some type of idea that this city is supposed to be important to God. It's, it's supposed to. It, 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 it's supposed to be. I don't want to say venerated, but it's so important that you have to pray towards towards it uh, five times a day. You would you would ha you would expect to find something, but the problem is is that it's it, it's just like it, it appears out of nowhere, like some. I don't know some some type of magic trick. Oh well, look the city over here that uh, that's been here since uh, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve are actually thrown down over here. This is the actual city that God has always uh, uh, wanted everybody to follow. When you know He wants you to pray there five times a day. You're supposed to make a pilgrimage there uh, at least once during your lifetime. That's how important the city is. But nobody mentions that city ever. It's not mentioned anywhere before or before and during the seventh century. So if, if it's not mentioned, you would have to think, if it isn't mentioned, you would have to think that it did not exist. Now, there are a couple, uh, couple arguments that they do make for its existence, but if you look at them, they, they're, they're, they are easily answerable, and they do not hold water when, when they're critically analyzed. And uh, Rad uh, made a mention to Ptolemy when Ptolemy was... Um, uh, talking about a waterway to a city that was in Arabia, but that city was along the Gulf of Aqaba, just straight uh, straight east of the Gulf of Aqaba, about 90 miles. Nowhere near close enough to Mecca, which would be 600 miles, or was it 90 kilometers or 90 miles? It doesn't matter. But it, it's not even close to what it would uh, need to be in order to be uh, Mecca. So when you start looking at... Um, the uh, mentions of it, previous mentions of it, none of them, none of them hold any water when you when you look at them with a critical eye. Uh, and then again, there again, if you if you the buy if you're going to make demands on the Bible, saying okay, you have to demonstrate that Jesus Christ lived in the first century in order to believe that um, he's a historical person. Well, then you would have you you can look at the New Testament because there's all kinds of evidence for it. Okay, fine, I get that. But the New Testament is corroborated by um, other sources, outside sources, the Jewish including, Talmud. Including the Quran. Hello. 
including the Cron, but I don't consider the Cron yeah. to be a reliable source. I, I don't, don't think know. I don't either, but there, it, it's still Jesus has confirmed his Torah and his gospel. His gospel is confirmed by the Quran. The Injil? Yeah, the Injil. Yeah. If they want to they want to start playing word games about Injil, we can go there too. But then they're going to have to produce the Injil, right? Well, well, no, they don't. They can just say that it it was a book given to Jesus. Uh, well, they can say all they want to. <laughs> then we're going back to the tradition, right? Right. Uh oh, yeah. so, double yeah. standard. Hello. Yeah, we won't have any of that. I I I, I get it. Uh, Dominic, I see you're over there in chat. If you wanted to come in and, and join the the chat, you're more than welcome to. Also, uh, okay, hey, uh, so, Eric. Yeah, Eric. Is, uh, is that DL? That's that's the silent. The silent one. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good to hear from you. I'm I'm good. I'm good. Uh, just wanted to piggyback off of uh, Brother John Isaac. Uh, if we were to go to Genesis chapter twenty-eight. <clears throat> and we uh, look at the uh, prophets. Mm -hmm. Let me pull it up for you. Genesis twenty-eight. Genesis. Start at start at verse start at verse six. Okay, hold on just a second. There we go. Genesis twenty-eight. Hold on. My, I, for some reason, my computer, and I thought I'd I had this fixed uh, when I put in all that extra RAM, and evidently. It didn't. Okay, so 28. Let me share my screen here. There we go. Genesis 28, what verse? Where are we going? We're going to start at verse 6. This is okay. this is uh, right before uh, Jacob's, uh, right before his uh, dream that, you know, the, the stairway. But anyway, it says Esau, verse 6, Esau noticed that, that Isaac blessed Jacob and sent him to Padan Aram to get a wife there. When he when he blessed him, Isaac commanded Jacob, do not marry a Canaanite girl. And Jacob listened to his father and mother and went to Padan Aram. Esau realized that his father, Isaac, disapproved of the Canaanite women. So Esau went to Ishmael and married in addition to his other wives, Mahala, daughter of Ishmael. Abraham's son. She was the sister of Nebaioth. Okay, so Esau, <clears throat> wanting to tick his parents off, went and married. Um, uh, well, when he saw that they, you know, they they didn't like the Canaanite women that he married, he married his uncle Ishmael's daughter. Correct. Correct. Which would prove that which would prove that Ishmael was still alive at this time. Ishmael, according to Islam, went down to Mecca and built the Kaaba with his father. Now, the Kaaba is supposed to be the house of God, right? I forgot the name of it. Uh, Bait something. Uh, uh, Baitullah. Baitullah Haram. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, <clears throat> following this incident, we have Jacob in verse 10, who goes down to Beersheba. Uh, he reached a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. He took one of the stones from the place, put it there at his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed a stairway was set on the ground with its top reaching to the sky and God's angels were ascending and descending on it. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip through this. But 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 anyway, I just want to point out the fact that Ishmael was supposed to have gone with his father, Abraham, to build the Kaaba. It was the house of God. It was the place of prayer for all nations. Correct. Correct. Okay. Well, after after uh, Jacob has this dream in verse 17 and verse 16, it says when G when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he said, surely Yahweh is in this place. And I did not know it. He was afraid and said, what an awesome place this is. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. OK, so and then in verse 22, he says, this stone that I have set up as a marker will be God's house. So this is fascinating because if Ishmael had just went with his father, Abraham, not too long ago to build the Kaaba, the so-called house of God and the place of prayer for all nations, then why would then why would Jacob see Beth El, which actually means the house of God, Beth El, the house of God? Why would it? Why would it be, be uh, in Palestine? 
So don't we have two houses of God here? And why was it that Jacob didn't recognize that Mecca was the house of God? Hold on. Because the thing is, uh, isn't, is, um, I know it's got stripling. Because I know that with Bethel, I think is it because that you have uh, uh, Kabat um, 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 Malkata? So, so there's well, two or three different sites that are actually for for Bethel. The thing is, it's it's so crazy because I mean, why not? If you, if you look at the distance that, that Abraham would have to travel, it would be like three to four days. But the thing is, even even if, even if it's that tr that's true, all the all the references to Mecca are mostly in, in the actual Hadiths, and you only have one outright reference in the quran and even even that's kind of spurious so it, it's like so so yeah so, so so they're all dated later by the by the actual actual abbasid period so even even if you were to look at the archaeology and say okay let's let's state the bethel is in jordan you have massive problems with the fact of okay there's there's no trade routes to to Mecca at that time period, and it, it doesn't exist on any map. So, 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 kind of, what, 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 what type of hyperbole or kind of flight of fancies do the kind of Muslims um, think that they're on? Kind of with the uh, with the with the actual location of Mecca. So yeah, I'm bringing up. Yeah, a, I mean, what I was ahead. pointing out is that John John Isaac uh, you know hit the nail on the head because we don't have any prophets mentioning Mecca and you have a problem here because we have Esau, the brother of Jacob going to Ishmael to marry one of his daughters, showing that Ishmael was still alive. He had, he must have just recently right before Abraham died, built the Kaaba with his father. But then Jacob recognizes that Bethel is the house of God. Because the thing is, I mean, if, we, if we're looking at it critically, it, it's only Muslim sources that actually state that they built the cover. There must be other sources dating early on that actually mention because because there's there's no either Christian or Jewish sources that mention the Kaaba. Right. Well, well I, I would expect that that maybe maybe a later prophet would have corrected Jacob and said, no, this can't be the house of God because Abraham and Ishmael built the house of God down in Mecca. Yeah, I think that's what John was. That's what oh, that was what John was alluding to. There's no there's no mention of any other prophet. Go ahead, Ed. I'm sorry. No, that's no problem. Uh, I was just going to say uh, the one other thing that you need to point out is that there's not one complete Quran manuscript out there. Not one. Not even one. Huh. What do you mean? Not, there, there, what do you mean? There's no prior to the printing press. There's no complete. <laughs> manuscript. Yeah, there's no complete manuscript out there. Uh, I've talked extensively with Al Fadi about that. I was not aware of that. Complete. That's it's that's not one complete. Mm -hmm. So that's a seven hundred. Um, Printing press was fourteen fifty three, I think. Seven right, eight hundred years later. Yeah, it, it, yeah. You don't have a complete. That's that's amazing. That's pretty amazing, considering the fact that we have uh, the Vaticanus and uh, uh, Samiaticus uh, with predate of Islam by three centuries for yeah. crying out. We we have over. 20 manuscripts and if you go and look at the uh, uh, the Greek manuscripts alone 5,000 of them they're complete we'll, we'll find several complete manuscripts at all of them. you do not have one complete Quran manuscript period now if okay so why do you think that is <laughs> I'm, well, I'm just, because I, I would think you would think that if the Quran is supposed to be that important, you would have you would have because I thought that the Sana manuscript was complete. I, that was my understanding. No, You're saying that's it's not, not that's not complete either. No, it's not. None of them are. And anybody that tells you that it is, tell them to prove it. Uh, Gabriel Sama put out a 
a book about that particular manuscript alone. I bought the book. It was 65 bucks. And I went through it, and it's incomplete. That, that manuscript, there are missing parts in that manuscript all throughout it. So uh, he did go through and, he, and even prove where uh, it, was more, it was based more on the Aramaic. It even, he even calls it the Aramaic language of the Quran. The Aramaic? Aramaic, yes, sir. Aramaic, Ga Gabriel which, Sama. Which we because there's, there's quite a few different variations of Aramaic. Which time period and which? Uh, hold on. Let me just tell you the name of the book. Let me go. Get What's his it name? Quick. Gabriel Usama. You said no. Gabriel Sama. Oh. Uh, S a w uh, m a. I believe here it is. Yeah, the Quran misinterpreted, mistranslated, and misread the Aramaic language of the Quran by Gabriel Salma, S A W M A. Okay, let me. Uh, okay, there we go. All right. And this then we right can here. show you, and we all know that the early Quran manuscripts didn't have the dots, didn't have all the, the little the little dots and uh, squigglies that all made the Arabic language. And if you look at it, you can tell that it was Aramaic, not Arabic. Yeah, the token, okay, yeah, yeah, the diacritical marks. The, yeah, the earliest, yeah. supposed to, the yeah, earliest ones are supposed to, uh, uh, don't have that, but that's because they had not been developed. That's, when that's, were John might be able to answer this, or you guys might be able to tell me when when were these diacritical marks invented? Does anybody know that off the top of your heads? Yeah, it says it in here. I don't remember right off the top of my heads, but it is. Uh, I'll look for it real quick. Uh, mistranslated and was okay. University law. Commercial contract, whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, he got he got into a lot of trouble. The copyright. Um, Look at the. See. How much does this thing cost? Holy crap! Yeah, it was sixty-five <laughs> bucks. I paid for it, man. <laughs> <laughs> copyright. That. Copyright was two thousand six. Wow. Because the thing is, the book, of, the book of Daniel is in both Aramaic and yeah, this... and, and Hebrew. And the thing is, that that directly comes from the Persian. So that would be like the Sassanid Empire mm -hmm. that that actually comes from. So um, so there's a direct link because I because I, I know that I was trying to prove say say the early early veracity of the book of Daniel because you have uh, the language the, the language of the Babylonians is 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 Akkadian, but Aramaic is spoken by people like Darius and other kind of people famous famous in, the, in natural scriptures. Yeah. Gabriel was a linguist in several different languages, Arabic being, you know, one of his ma major uh, languages, so he knew it quite well. He knew, knows Aramaic quite well. He teaches this stuff. Uh, he's a professor. Um, and let me see here. Oh yeah, the, he got he got a lot he got a lot of Muslims really mad at him over this book <laughs> because he you know he even shows where verses could it, you know uh, written without the the diacritical marks could have been uh, interpreted different ways. What does what is what does this manuscript date date to roughly? What's what's the carbon dating on the on the manuscript? Uh, let's see the Salma. Oh, hold on, let me check real quick. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> I'm looking at. Uh, let's see here. Let me bring this up here. Gives you a little. Four one one. Okay, he's a professor, in Middle East constitutional law. Um, adjunct professor, Middle East studies, expert consultant on international 
matrimonial law, mainly Islamic and Hindu, uh, taught at Fairleigh Dixon University, New Jersey. Oh, so he's in the United States now. Um, yeah, he's at, been in the U.S. Uh, uh, for a while. Okay, that explains why he's alive. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, yeah, um, because in apostates normally um, don't have a lot of luck with um, having their heart. I, I found the Google version of it. There's a Google Books version of it. Did you? So we don't have to pay sixty bucks. Yeah, you do. No. What do you, you think? Can only that, read, you can only read about so many pages of it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I bought it. the book, man. I bought the book. Bite the bullet. Buy the book. <laughs> well, that's the thing with uh, um, Dan Gibson's books with the uh, uh, chronic was it the chronic geography. This I don't. I can't remember how much these books were, but they weren't. You know, ten bucks or they're they're, they're seem like they're thirty and forty bucks. So sometimes, you, if you want to get something that's good, that's good resource, mm -hmm. you just gotta you gotta suck it up. But yeah, man, I mean, this is gold, dude. For sixty five bucks, the gold that you get is incredible. What was the name of the book again? It's called the Quran, misinterpreted, mistranslated, and misread the Aramaic language of the Quran by Gabriel Sama. And Quran it misinterpreted. It's right there. Uh, DL, I just put it up in the Quran. The Quran misinterpreted, mistranslated, and misread the Aramaic language of the Quran by the Kafir Gabriel Sama. <laughs> 70 bucks. It's even got up. You gotta, you're going to have to pay more for it. Unless you want to buy the $163 version. Um, I don't know if you want to do that. I tried to find an e-book on it, and there is none. So Yeah, I, I already already tried that. <laughs> okay, well, that, that, yeah. that just... That should tell you... That should tell that's you how much... That's what I was much, trying to do. That should tell you how much flack this guy caught from the Muslim community for publishing this book. He got a lot. Sure. Hey, I, Eric. I, yeah. Eric, we got. I got. I got one more from the prophets. Let's go. Uh, let's go to Jeremiah chapter seven, verses eleven and twelve. Okay, Jeremiah. Let me see here. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Where's Jeremiah? There he is. It's in the what Bible. Number? Yeah. What? What? Uh, verse chapter seven. Chapter chapter seven, verses eleven and twelve. 11 and 12. Okay. There you go. Go ahead. So uh, he says, has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers in your view? Yes, I too have seen it. This is the Lord's declaration. So he's talking about the, the, the house in Jerusalem. But then the next verse, he says, but return to my place that was at Shiloh, where I made my name dwell at first. So here's another problem. Before the house in Jerusalem, he says Shiloh was the place in which he caused his name to dwell first, not Mecca. Mm. Shai, uh, if you look to, if you ever look at uh, Scott Striplings, that's that's where he's kind of got his dig at Shiloh. I think I've got a friend who's about to dig at Shiloh. So yeah, is that right? Yeah, no, they, they found like that's like an altar at Shiloh. I think they found. There's more than one site for the tabernacle at Shiloh, from what I've kind of, what I've kind of think. There's a whole thing I think on Vimeo called Joshua's Conquest, and he goes into detail of like what, what's been going on at Shiloh. It, it's very very fascinating. So yeah. Well, I mean, it's it, you know, like John Isaac said, this is problematic because none of the prophets are recognizing a house of God in Mecca or Arabia, and so. Jeremiah is saying that before his name dwelled in Jerusalem, it dwelled in Shiloh. He didn't say in Mecca. Because the thing is, they, they mentioned Abraham. And that's the thing is, Abraham didn't build any houses. <laughs> you know, and then when you talk about building, if, if you go to if you go to first Kings and you look at that building project that Solomon had for the temple. I mean, the, the, the amount of money that it took and the labor, but it was only Abraham and, and, and Ishmael that went and bent, 
built the house, you know, for God. The, 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 the thing is, yeah, that, I mean, who, who, who funded that thing? But, but according to the scriptures, the only thing like in the like in the Torah and stuff like that is the only thing he built was wells. He was he was forbidden to build actual any because he, he lived as a nomad. So there's uh, no way, no way that he could he could do any building if it was. Um, no, I'm I'm trying to find actual scripture in the. Uh, because is isn't he actually forbidden by God to actually build? Because the only only piece of land that he owns is the field of the field of Mac uh, the field of Mac Pilar. Well, then he also bought the the, the uh, cave for you know the, to bury uh, Sarah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So the thing is the ev the, the evidence from the actual from the Torah, I, I think is it the, I can't remember, the tablets. Is it, is it? Well, uh, I mean, we just have these prophets and none of them recognize that Mecca is a house of God. They don't even yeah. know anything about a city, a city the, the, called Mecca. But, but the ironic thing is, is that Abraham didn't do any building. None, <laughs> absolutely none. So not in Palestine. Not in no, 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 not any at all. It's like, it's like, I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's no example of him in the scriptures doing any building whatsoever at all. Because some, some even Arabs, build, them, but, but and even Arabs before Islam never say that Abraham came to Mecca or built any building. It's just <laughs> in Quran. What, what uh, historical sources do you have before the Quran? I mean. Um, all the points that made by uh, uh, all points uh, uh, written, uh, they wrote everything about their life. They wrote everything about their families, about their wives, uh, their uh, girlfriends. Uh, you can see uh, like uh, some names, Emir Ul Qais, Antara ibn Shaddad. All these are great writers or great uh, poems. Wrote a lot, a lot of things before Islam. I there is no one said that uh, we are children of Abraham who built a holy house or Kaaba in our place. No one said that. And the writings, or uh, it, it's um, till now you can search and find. Even Warqa ibn Nawfal, we ha has his writings. <laughs> hey guys i'm gonna have to run and cut today's sh uh, show sh short i have my grandkids with me this afternoon and i'm the only one home and they are in dire need of me um do you guys have anything else that you wanted to add before we uh, cut on out of here now, i'd just like to definitely say check out gabriel sama's book it's well worth it. Uh, the the ammunition that it gives you is uh, blindsiding to every Muslim I've ever presented it to. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would just like to add all you cool for are going to hell. You should take your shahada like I didn't from Islam. <laughs> where's, 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 where's your where's your where's your advert, radical? Have you got your advert? You, I, you know what? I just haven't been feeling funny at all. I've been so depressed, but I'm here <laughs> my depression. So you know what? It is? I know what exactly it is that you actually have a job now. That's true too. Yeah, that's true too. But the job is really getting depressing as well. It's all CRT stuff. You have no idea, dude. They had a thing. Honestly, of um, talking about transsexualism, I mean, and how to support them. And I, it was just really goofy. I was like, yeah, I don't think so. Anyway, Amazon is not for me. <laughs> Fly on the wall. Okay. Everybody I mean, dude, I'm, I'm trying to keep my mouth shut, but I'm telling you, I'm going to explode there. I'm going to get fired. You watch. It's going to happen. <laughs> well, you like unemployment again. That's what everybody else is doing. No, no, they're cutting that off, dude, because they figured well, out that you can't pay people to stay at home. <laughs> well, good. they need to. They definitely, they definitely need to. Okay, folks, I'm cutting it short. Again, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming and uh, spending your afternoon here with us. I hope that uh, you were informed and you were edified with uh, 
uh, today's topic. And uh, come back Tuesday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time for Radio Free Affairs, Dan. We'll see you all then. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.